So you finally did it. You've decided that Montessori education is the way you want to go for your child. So how do you find a school that's actually going to be a true Montessori school and a good fit for you? You may be surprised to know that looking for an accredited school is not all there is to it. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria. I'm a first time mom navigating motherhood while introducing Montessori to my baby girl. Today I'm coming to you not only as a Montessori parent, but also as someone who's been on the other side. If you're new to my channel, my mom does run and direct the Montessori school, and that is where I fell in love with the Montessori principle. Being inside the class, I really saw what Montessori is able to do for our children, and I knew that one day I definitely wanted to implement it with my kids. And when the time came, looking for a school that was close enough to us and had the infant toddler program, it was a lot easier to find a school that would be a great fit for us, having been inside the classroom. Now to give you an even additional perspective, I did interview my mom and compiling information for this video. She is AMS certified. So that way we can definitely make sure we're covering our bases and understanding how we can find the best Montessori school for your family. Now if you made it this far in your search, I'm assuming you already know some basic things, such as the fact that Montessori is not trademarked or copyrighted so anyone can really tack it onto their name and call themselves Montessori. That Montessori should not have a teacher just staying in front of a classroom and teaching the same lesson to the entire class. That Montessori should really have low shelves where children can get access to their materials and their works independently. That everything in this classroom should be child-sized and children should be able to again have freedom of movement and freedom of choice. Now even if you know all of this, how can you really be sure that you're finding a true Montessori school at a time when Montessori has become a buzzword and a really hot topic and something that a lot of schools want to stay there associated with. Now, a lot of well-meaning resources are encouraging parents to simply rule out anything that is not AMS certified or recognized by AMI. And I would really discourage you from doing that. Now, a quick background. AMS is American Montessori Society and AMI is Association Montessori International. AMI was started by Dr. Montessori herself and then one of her students with the direction of Mario Montessori, Dr. Montessori's son, went ahead and started AMS in the Americas knowing that it would need to be slightly adapted for the American children. So what is this accreditation process and why is it not going to be the end-all be-all way of finding the best Montessori school? So the AMS accreditation process, for example, has several components. A school can be an AMS member, meaning that they have agree to follow the AMS code of ethics, they can be on the pathway to accreditation and there are different steps in that. Once the school has reached step six, they are following the five core Montessori principles. And those are having properly certified teachers, having a multi-age class, using Montessori materials, having child-directed work, and an uninterrupted work cycle. So if you're looking at a school that is on step six of the accreditation process, you're looking at a true Montessori school. So what is the difference between that and the final accreditation step? It's actually a lot of paperwork and finances that some schools just do not have the resources or the budget for. Final steps include a self-study, a peer evaluation, and creating a plan for future improvements. And while those can be helpful for a school, they're not necessarily going to affect how good of a Montessori education they provide to your child. So I really recommend not limiting yourself to only accredited schools. Only 15% of AMS Montessori schools are accredited, meaning you would be really limiting yourself in finding a Montessori school if you only go that route. Moreover, being an accredited school does not necessarily mean it is a great school or a school that is going to be the perfect fit for your family. Now, obviously the inverse can be true. A school in step six may not be the best fit for your family either, but those are not going to be the two deciding factors. I really recommend expanding your search and looking at both schools that are on step six, schools that are accredited. For AMI, their terminology is AMI recognized, that is the equivalent of being AMS accredited. The level under that is AMI affiliated, meaning that two thirds or three quarters or any multiple of that of the classrooms are led by AMI certified teachers. And the level below that is AMI associated, meaning that only 50% of the classrooms are led by AMI teachers. Now the difference between AMI and AMS schools has also suddenly become a hot topic and honestly your biggest concern is first going to be finding a school that it is a true Montessori school in your area and one that is going to be a good fit for you and if you've narrowed down your schools and there's two perfectly wonderful candidates and the only difference between them is AMI and AMS you're extremely lucky <laughs> and in that case I will leave links down below to AMI and AMS respectively and you can make a decision of which of those two would be a better fit for you but for most of us before we even get to that level we're going to be left with just one school that would be a good fit for us now another way that I've seen advice to look for Montessori school is one that is going to be nonprofit versus private because the nonprofit school is going to be focused only on providing the best things for your children versus a private school is going to be only profit driven. And with that, again, I would say you really need to be cautious of seeing it as those two black and white extremes because honestly, if someone was profit driven, Montessori is not the way they would go. 
they would try to open a more traditional daycare, which is a lot easier to fill with cheap plastic toys, hire a cheaper staff that does not require this expensive accreditation, and make a lot more money that way. Going nonprofit is also not a simple process, and that's something that every school would like to take the time and resources to do. Being a nonprofit school does not make it a better school than a private school. Nonprofit schools are led by a board of directors, whereas a private school is usually led by a single person or maybe a team of private individuals. And the biggest question would honestly be not whether it's nonprofit or private, but who is the person or people leading the schools. What is their experience with Montessori? What is their education? What have they been doing up until this point? So if you have a board of directors in a nonprofit school of current parents of the school and people who have never actually interacted with children from an education perspective, are they really going to be a better guide for where the school should be going in the future versus someone who is leading a private school and has a master's in child education, is certified by AMS or AMI, and has been doing this for their entire life. Again, you may obviously have the where the leader of a private school has no idea what they're doing and a wonderful board of directors is leading a nonprofit school. But again, rather than focusing on nonprofit versus private, I really encourage you to ask what is their accreditation and what is the experience of the person who's in charge of the school? So what else should you be asking a school when you're interviewing them? So I would start with asking who's leading the school. And then I would ask what qualifications do the teachers of the school have? Are they taught in-house, which is a really red flag, or do they have AMS or AMI certified teachers? Do they offer their teachers with opportunities for improvement, to have continual studies with AMS or AMI again, and how many of the teachers in a class are AMS or AMI certified. Depending on the ratio, there may be one teacher in the classroom or there may be two. And if there's two teachers in the classroom, I would ask, are both of them Montessori certified teachers? So actually one of the schools that I was looking at in my area had one teacher that was certified and an assistant that was not and you could really tell the difference between that class and one that had both teachers that were certified. Definitely ask about what certifications and what requirements the school has for their teachers. Another question to ask is what kind of community does the school have with its parents? Are parents encouraged to come and observe the classroom? Are they encouraged to visit to share their culture during cultural holidays? Are they encouraged to visit during family events such as Valentine's Day or Halloween or something during the summer? Are there informational sessions that the school is leading in educating the parents about the Montessori principles and how you can continue to work with the school and your child at home in order to really give your child a well-rounded education. Now, another question that I like to ask to really get a full understanding of whether or not the school follows the Montessori principle is, what do you do if a child is stuck in one area at all times? What if my daughter only wants to work on art or only wants to work on practical life day in and day out and she is never reaching for those mathematical or language activities? And the answer that your guide or the teacher or the director gives you is is going to speak volumes about what they think about the Montessori principle and how well they follow it. The answer you're looking for should highlight that one, children are allowed freedom of choice and that the school does encourage the child to choose and work on activities and materials that they find interesting and they're interested in. However, the Montessori environment is also a structured and guided environment. So the school should be able to tell you that they encourage and invite the child to try some activities. Hopefully you may even be able to see this when you tour the school. The Montessori teacher should know exactly where each child is in their development, what materials they have and have not worked with, and if they notice that a child has not approached any of the mathematical activities, for example, they should make it very encouraging and fun and inviting and invite the child to look at and try out one of the activities. It should not be forceful, but it should be something that they invite and encourage the child to try so that they are receiving a well-rounded education. And a bonus would be if the school is able to explain to you how the practical life or the art area, for example, is still able to prepare your child for things like language and math. Now, the best way to really understand if a Montessori school is a true and good Montessori school is to visit them. During the pandemic, this may be harder, but a good Montessori school should invite you to visit and observe and tour their school. The Great Montessori school would invite you to do so during their morning work cycle because this is when you can really see their school at work, you can see their children at work, and you can really see how the school works. During the pandemic this may be different just because they may not want outside visitors visiting when their children are in the classrooms, so definitely check with that. But if you're watching this in the future when we're all done with this craziness, that is exactly what you should be looking for. Now when you're visiting a school, what are you looking for? Obviously as we've discussed, you're looking for child size furniture, you're looking for things to be readily available and easily accessible to them, you're looking for a teacher that is getting down at the child's level, they're speaking to them very respectfully, they're not yelling across the way, there's not running and commotion and loud plastic toys, it should be a very calm and peaceful environment. 
In fact, some people get a little bit concerned about how quiet it can be during the morning work cycles. And to that, I will say that outside of the morning work cycle, they are still children. There is a chatter and a buzz when they're preparing snacks or when they're getting ready for lunch. When they're outside, they're definitely children that have loud voices and they're expressing themselves creatively. But during those morning work cycles, they're very focused and they're concentrated. Depending on the classroom you're visiting and depending on really the day, the teaching style, the children that day and how the kids are feeling, you may see kids working in pairs, you may see kids working in groups, you may see the teacher working with a small group of children if they're all learning something together, you may see a teacher interacting one-on-one -on -one with a child, you may even see the teacher simply sitting in a corner and observing her classroom. And if the children are working and concentrated and not just running around crazily, that is an amazing Montessori classroom. Dr. Montessori said that the biggest accomplishment of a Montessori teacher is for the children to work as if I did not exist. And if that's what you're seeing in the classroom, you have found a wonderful Montessori school. Now, caveat to not having the teacher teach one thing to the entire classroom would be in the elementary classrooms when they are going through their great lesson. So if you do happen to walk into a Montessori class where one teacher is sitting with all of the students and they're learning something together, I encourage you to ask what they're learning. You may be experiencing a great lesson in action, or you may have walked into circle time, which is when children are moving from their uninterrupted work cycle and transitioning into the next step of their daily activities. You may be able to recognize some classic Montessori materials in a Montessori classroom like a pink tower and brown stairs, but I honestly encourage you to stay away from looking for those two and some of the more commonly used Montessori activities like an object permanence box for infant toddlers because those are very popular and those are very easily placed in a traditional daycare that is not even related to Montessori. So if you're very familiar with all the Montessori activities, you may scan the shelves for those. But if you're not very familiar with all the Montessori activities, I encourage you to to look in that practical life and snack preparation area. What you should be seeing is things that a traditional daycare would simply not allow their children to work with. Glasses made of actual glass, knives, apple peelers, apple slicers, pitchers that are made of glass, things that are easily breakable and things that we assume as adults are only to be used by adults. You should see children using these items safely, you should see them being very careful and very meticulous with how they're using them, and you should see them readily available for the children. During the tour of the classroom, you should also be able to see very distinct areas for mathematics, for language, practical life, sensorial, art, and cultural studies. In a great Montessori class, you will also see some life plants and maybe even pets for them to take care of and really learn how to take care of other living things. You should look for children doing things independently. So if they're getting ready to go outside, for example, the teacher should not be running around and tying up the shoelaces of each child. Instead, children should be allowed to try to tie them themselves and only receive help when they ask for it and really truly need it. You should be observing children putting on their jackets themselves, finding their own gloves, their hats, changing their outside shoes into their inside shoes. And instead of the teacher helping the younger kids, you should be observing the older children helping their younger friends. And again, throughout this, you should be observing a very respectful, peaceful, and calm environment. If you have additional experience or things you would like to share about finding a Montessori school that works for you, definitely let us know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you stay safe.